Good morning, I'm Joseph Selleck, and I'm very happy to be here with you all this morning, and glad to be welcoming back Mishu Landon. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Mishu um, gave me some notes this morning. So she says, the mystery has been catching up on her traveling, letting the comet burn off the dross. She is a reverend with the Church of Divine Light, continues leading Qigong and yoga practices when she's here in Santa Fe. She is a writing coach helping right brain authors more credibly reach left brain readers. She offers evolutionary witnessing, and she's a wonderful singer and songwriter. Yay. Please welcome Yay. Mr. Yay. Lines stitching here to the 
And let's see. Oh. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, every day. on our minds and the hearts on our hearts and the eyes on our hearts to what is available. Everybody in the room already knows, but just in case there's someone who sees this later in the week who doesn't know, I'm Reverend Ann Ray, and I am blessed beyond measure to serve this community as its spiritual minister. As its <laughs> Today's talk title, Changed. Just like last week's did. Uh, because there was something that became more relevant. And the reading that Reverend Diana Lee shared about mental equivalence is because we're talking about mental equivalence today. And we're talking about recombobulation part two. Because <laughs> last week was recombobulation part one. And last week, as you may recall, when I spoke about recombobulation on Sunday, two days before, Denise and I had received the uh, surprise news that we were uh, being invited to relocate to another home yet to be found. And this week, as part of Recompopulation Part 2, now mind you, only seven days have passed since we've talked about this, and only nine days have passed since we received the news, is to share with you that yesterday we signed a lease on the house. And I have to tell you, we're pretty proud of that. <laughs> because um, between our friends and friends of friends, and dear ones who came up with all kinds of ideas, we found places and opportunities that we never would have imagined. So this is when, to say we never would have imagined it, is really an important part of this conversation. Because clearly, Something within us was way ahead of us in terms of our conscious awareness. 
There was something within us that had no doubt. There was something within us that knew that it was only a matter of following the breadcrumbs, of making one choice after another with an open mind and an open heart and a willingness to see things differently. Now, as many of you know, and if you didn't know, you certainly knew from the conversation we had last week, over the last 10 years, we've become very attached to where we live. And what we recognized was that, that this invitation to relocate was also an invitation to look at our attachments. I'd like to say that we learned that lesson and we're done. <laughs> but when we look at where certain things are in our house and how they're located and how they're situated and, and we know that um, this new place, as great as it is, doesn't offer those necessarily, those locations, then it's like, well, shoot. <laughs> Where are we going to put that? <laughs> We've been doing deep work, both together and individually, on on being able to not only see things differently, but allow, you know, it's like, it's like the ending of the reading that Reverend Diana Lee shared with us today, being a bigger receptacle. So let's talk a little bit about mental equivalence before I spend this whole time talking about our new house. <laughs> mental equivalence and the teaching about mental equivalence is, is very important to understanding the science of mind and how it works. The law and how it works. What law am I talking about? I'm talking about the law of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Right? All right? I heard that big sigh. <laughs> I'm talking about the law of reciprocity. And tell you a little secret. The idea, the understanding, the inspiration, the intuition about Mental equivalence did not start with Ernest Holmes. <gasps> it started with this very interesting judge who lived in India. He was an Indian, he was British. But this was during the British occupation of India, or ownership, or whatever you want to call it. Sovereignty. <clears throat> Dr. Thomas Troward. Now you think Holmes is interesting to read. Um, Troward will really give you a run for your money too. But anyway, back to mental equivalence. So he was a judge. He was also a brilliant mathematician. And he grasped the, the workings of the universe in ways that no one had before him. And mental equivalence <coughs> was 
was what he called establishing in mind, and by the way, this definition hasn't changed. It's the same. Establishing in mind a clear sense, and I'm emphasizing that word for a reason, because it isn't just a picture. It isn't just a concept. It's a clear sense, and with that sense comes a feeling about what it is that we're calling forward. And while Denise and I were, were unclear about what we were calling forward, we experienced a lot of things that matched that lack of clarity. But once we got clear, and we let go of anything that wasn't relative or re relevant to that clarity, once we let it go, we found the house like that. Or it found us. We don't care. Now, other little interesting house facts to, to give emphasis to what I'm saying about a clear sense. Once we got clear, Denise saw this house just pop up on her computer at work on some site Zillow. that wasn't... Zillow. Oh, was it Zillow? I thought it was Bing. Anyway, it, I mean, literally, you know, and, and Denise hadn't been looking at houses on Zillow on her work computer. Now, of course, we all know that our computers know stuff. <laughs> and they catch our thoughts. which is a little unnerving. But anyway, this house just showed up on Denise's work computer. Denise called me, asked me if I could meet her there. I said, absolutely. So we met at this house. We were the very first people to see it. And before we left, we'd given them a deposit. Wow. Bada bing. Bada boom. That's exactly how it happened. There's, there's some other funny stories about it that I'll share in a minute. But I want to get back to the mental equivalent thing. Because we can tend, we can tend to disregard the importance of our mental equivalence. We can say, oh, well, I can have a good thought about that. I can have, I mean, even something simple, like I can just decide that whatever it is that I'm working on today that is going to be easy, and it's going to flow like it has its own energy, which it does. And I can just be the receiver of that. It can be anything. Because the truth is that we have a mental equivalent about everything. Whether or not we're paying attention. We have a preconceived idea about many things. And a preconceived idea, when we have energy behind it, 
good energy, not so good energy, eh, energy, any kind of energy behind it, that is a mental equivalent. What we can expect from a mental equivalent, Dr. Troward would say, is its revelation, its fulfillment, exactly as we imagine it. Exactly. Not slightly corrected because that would be better for us. <laughs> Not slightly adjusted because there's some great something somewhere that uh, knows it has a better idea. No. It's exactly. Dang it. So, whose responsibility do you think our mental equivalents are? Right here. No place else. And as much as we might like to point <coughs> fingers or blame or shame or um, say, well, you know, if, if they were just doing whatever, then I would be able to co-create in my life what, what it is that I am desiring. No. It isn't somebody else's fault or job. So well. So what do we do? What do we do? I'm going to refer once again to Diana Lee's reading from Dr. Holmes and remind us all that whatever the size container is that we bring for whatever it is that we say we desire, that's what gets filled. Mm -hmm. Now, in our imaginations, it may be ginormous. <clears throat> but in our belief, there's this. There's this small cup of availability, of willingness, of acceptance, of the ability to embody, let alone say yes to our own good, there's, there's this little bitty cup. And, and the little bitty cup gets filled with something that's little bitty. And we look at it and we go, well, that isn't what I meant. Where's, where are the millions? I buy a lottery ticket every day or week or whatever, whenever you do that. I do my prayer work. I, I do all this stuff. I show up on Sunday for church. None of those outside things are actually activities of faith. Because faith is an inside job. And our faith, different from our belief, how is it different, one might ask? It's a good question. How is faith different from belief? Okay, I'll tell you. 
Belief is in what we already know. Belief is knowing that when we put the key in the, in the door of our home, that it's very likely to unlock the door and let us in. Belief is that when we put our hand on the, on the car door, that the car is gonna open. Belief is in what we already know that we have evidence for, that we can, to ourselves, prove. Faith, everybody take a breath. Faith is in the unseen. is in the unseen, is in the formless, is in an idea, in, in an intellect, in an energy that contains and is everything. Mm. Everything that has ever been, everything that will ever be, everything that is right now, everything, everyone, the one life. We can't see it. We can see evidence of it, but we can't see it. And to it, there are no limits. So when we're working with mental equivalents, we're actually working in the realm of all possibility rather than the possibilities that we may be familiar with which are limited because they're familiar, right? Yes. Poor people know that's right. I'm serious. The difference is enormous. It's not just a word. The difference between belief and faith are like night and day. I believe that I can walk from here to the back of the room in perfect comfort. And do you know why I believe that? because I've done it before. It's familiar to me. Faith, on the other hand, is where fulfillment that could otherwise not be explained unfolds. And that is the key element, that and our belief in it. Don't get confused by the, my use of the word belief <coughs> and belief. Uh, let me try that again. Because for me, faith and, and our work towards just allowing ourselves to live in, as, with faith. It isn't an intellectual practice. It is, it is allowing the wisdom within to run the show. Because it's beyond all reason. It's beyond all explanation. But that's what we're using when we are establishing a mental equivalent intentionally knowing that the outcome and the possibilities within that outcome 
go way beyond our previous or anyone else we know know of their previous experience. Mm -hmm. Because that is an intellectual understanding and observation. How many of you ever saw Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid? Do you remember when they jumped off the cliff? Yeah. Do you remember when Indiana Jones took that step yeah. into the abyss? That's what I'm talking about. Except it doesn't involve any danger. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it doesn't involve the possibility of drowning or breaking one's neck. The only thing that it involves is the possibility of having our dreams and desires fulfilled in ways that just take our breath away. Again, and again, and again, and again. You know, I, I know for sure that if the divine had a personality like we do, one of its favorite things would be blowing our minds. Because when we think something can't be done, but we're willing to leave a little room that, okay, I think something can't be done, but I'm willing to leave a little room that there might be a way that I haven't yet experienced. When we're willing to leave that little bit of room, that little bit of room is filled to the brim instantly because we're, we're willing to allow, we're willing to be open, we're willing to say yes to the yes that has already been spoken to us. Yes. You know, a lot of people don't understand that. They don't understand when we say the universe has a one word vocabulary and it's yes. But if you stop and think about it, and I'm going to ask you to go intellectual with me for a second. Just don't stay there. <laughs> when you stop and think about it, how would the, would the possibility be otherwise? There's only one life. We are that life. The tree is that life. This building is that life, which takes too long to explain. Everything is an expression of that life. And it takes wonderful care of itself. It doesn't deny itself anything. So why would it deny that doesn't even make sense. I'm going to take good care of myself and all of my all of myself except for you. No. And it doesn't matter how old we are, it doesn't matter how young we are, it doesn't matter what we've done, what we haven't done, what we've said, what we didn't say, what we thought, what we didn't think. In the final analysis, other than the fact that we are constantly drawing to us a reflection of what we believe, that's our choice. That's our choice. That's our preference 
of limitation. And man will argue for those lim limitations like nobody's business. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. All the while, Spirit, God, the universe is just hanging out with us waiting. Waiting for us to say yes. Waiting for our yes to be unconditional. Waiting for the opportunity to blow our minds. So why not? Why not dream bigger? Why not be a bigger vessel for life to fill? Why not? There isn't a single reason you can give me that is going to hold water. Because whatever reason you're going to give me already is a colander full of holes. <laughs> so Denise and I have, have signed a lease on our new home. And I'll just take an extra minute and tell you this funny story. So we got home and and we're just sitting and talking about the house and what happened and everything. And I said to Denise, wait a second, where's the fireplace? Mm -hmm. And she thinks about it and she says, I don't remember seeing a fireplace. Now, mind you, a fireplace was in our top 10 prerequisites. Mm -hmm. It's funny what you learn about what's important. Mm -hmm. Because there is no fireplace. <laughs> and you know what? It's okay. There's a fire pit outside that's really cool. There are lots of things about this house that are really cool. And as it turned out, again, questioning our attachments, would a fireplace have been nice? Yes. How, how much of the year do we use it? Maybe six months if we're lucky. And did we love having fireplaces all these years? Absolutely. Will we live without one? Absolutely. It's just so interesting what we learn when we're paying attention about what we truly believe and about what's truly important. My sweet friend, Barbara Cronroy, who has joined us today, she said to me before service, she said, you know, you need to come up with a really powerful affirmation for you guys that we can all do all week. Okay. So are you ready? Because I'm going to give it to you now. <clears throat> ready? And so it is. And so, so it is. is.
Uh, if I can call the ushers forward, please. It is now time for our conscious giving. And for those of you who stayed for our annual meeting last week, it was amazing. Thank you all for being here. We're just awesome energy in the room. And so, I, you know, I gave out a prayer that I had uh, fashioned for all of us to be reading every day. I'm just going to read a portion of that as our affirmation today. Because you remember that Everyday Center is 100% donation funded by our community. And so what I know is abundance is mine, abundance is ours. And I just have to look at the lavish provisions in nature and know that God intended for me to be abundantly supplied with everything that makes for beauty, well-being, progressive living, and happiness. And so if you just take your offering and infuse it with that idea of lavish abundance, <coughs> multiplication, <coughs> mental equivalent of expansion, knowing that it comes through us, and a portion of that we share with the Everyday Center. And so we are indeed abundant. And say with me our giving affirmation. The love of the Spirit blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive abundantly and so Thank you. So we have a couple of um, a couple of announcements is all. Uh, we want to thank those of as I just mentioned about our annual meeting, we have two new board members. They are Carol Rose and Reverend Diana Lee, uh, situated in California. So we welcome them to our expanded board, and we just know that uh, that spirit moves through them uniquely as a representation of our community. And also thanks to those who came to support the, our pre the everyday presence at Arbor Day Santa Fe. We enjoyed chatting with all of those who approached our table and gave away 50 baby trees. Yay. The wonderful, amazing Jean Watson facilitates the online 70s and up group, and they always have lively and topical discussions. So that happens, um, it's, it happens this Wednesday at 2 p.m. And check your link for to join into that group. It's a wonderful group. I know many, many of you have said it's a great group. Uh, take advantage of, the, of an extra faith lift by sitting in prayer one-on-one -on -one with either Patty Barry uh, here in the house or Diana Lee on Zoom. Um, also, I'm available if, need, if we need. And I just want to acknowledge Jackie for printing the prayers that we passed out last week as well. Um, take it home if you haven't share it with somebody else. It's a, it's a gift that can keep on giving. Yes. If I can be speaking, you know, we had our trivia questions last week. And Come on some up, of Jackie. our winners, Come some on of up. our winners are not here. We had a three way tie for first place. Oh. oh wow. Wow. Matt wow. and so Jack and Patty. Wow. Patty, come get your present. What were the answers? And thank you, thank you. We had several um, ideas for names for dogs and, that Ernest Holmes would have owned, and uh, decided that my favorite one was Ralph, after Ralph Waldo Emerson, and that was Sarah McCole, who is out of state at a wedding. But she came up with that. Uh, <laughs> and, all right. and we had a lot of really funny answers, too. <laughs> you can imagine what Stephen wrote. <laughs> Thank you, 